gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Well, we're on the subject of drilling, what with the previous video, figured we might as well go into actually drilling something and tapping that hole. Now, this is not our usual video here on the channel, although it will be fast and dirty. I'm going to go gentle. I remember what it was like my first time. I was scared. It was dark. I was all alone. Uh, as you can see, I got myself another workbench, what for accumulating crap on. And there is no more important tool in the shop, well, beyond the obvious, than a stout workbench, half inch top here, and a stout vise. This is just a little guy, number three, record, while they were still made in England. Not made of, uh, well, made of Sheffield cast steel, not made of the finest sintered chinesium. Unfortunately, you can't buy this anymore. This is just a little guy, four inch, and you can see it's got the beginner jaws on there. Soft aluminum. First things first, you gotta choose your foresters. I got half inch, coarse, and they fit perfect. They're the right length, all that stuff. So, now that we know we we're going with half inch coarse, we come over here to the tap and die chart. It's a bunch of gobbledygook on this side. But on this side, shows us half inch course right there on the bottom 2764 is the drill size for that size of tap and here we got the proper Mergen made uh, that's a maintenance tap it's it's not a taper tap it's not a starting tap it's middle of the road they call that a plug tap but it's not bottoming because it doesn't have threads all the way to the bottom and you can tell that's a good one on account of the shank you see the shank here it's just about as big as the bottom of the threads so you know it's skookum also if you look at the finish it's not all blasted sandblasted you can see the Irwins like you buy the Irwins at the homeless dust spot and they're not ground they're maybe ground but then they're wheel abraded or something nasty you can tell they're just junk so these ones are a good one you're not afeard to break these so 2760 force the good ones you don't really need good ones for mild steel, you can use Chinesium, but I got good ones, so I'm going to use them. These are split point, which means you do not need a pilot. However, this is a fair size drill bit, and I don't want to give myself a hernia trying to get a hole through there, so I am going to pilot drill it just so there's less meat to cut on the next way around. And here we go. So I got the pilot, nice big pilot, and you guys will remember this from that video where I did the underwater drilling and lo and behold still chooches so we've run the vise all the way out and we have marked the three holes with the center punch a nice big bertha here and we started drilling with the pilot then we'll through drill these we'll go up a size drill them again and then we will tap now our main concern is drilling straight the drill bit's going to help you out because it wants to drill straight it doesn't want to if you try and start a hole on an angulation, it's not going to go. It wants to drill straight. So all you need to do is use your body positioning. You have to have good positioning over the drill, good feed pressure. If you're all cantilevered out and you're uncomfortable, it's just like welding or, or painting. You're not going to get good results if you're, if you're not in a proper body position. So get yourself nice and stable, ready and solid base. Now you are gonna fuck up a whole lot at first. Now you can see I'm not using any lube because it doesn't need it. The chips are evacuating nicely. I'm drilling fast, but none of the chips are blue. And as you start to break through, you're gonna feel it get easier or the drill speed up a little bit. That tells you you got to back off on the feed, so don't go full 200 pound Canadian gorilla on it. Just you, you know, you never want to go full Canadian anyway. That's her. I'll drill the other holes here and then we'll go up a size. You can see I got good feed pressure here. 
because the chips are coming off like it's a drill press. You can tell when you're hand drilling and you got a bigger bit and the chips come off as little tiny needles, you know you don't have enough feed pressure. But because you're hand drilling, other than having a big lunch, there's not much you can do about that. Okay, you hear the drill? It changed its pitch, That's me that means, that means we're about to break through. And that breakthrough is the time that you're gonna snap drill bits. Because it catches and it screws itself in like a, like a wood screw, a carpenter's threaded nail. out maybe put her in one okay here's an interesting problem here we're gonna have a look at this okay right in there is a chip that hasn't been evacuated it's still part of the parent metal it's a it's a barb and what's happening is the drill bit wants to feed itself in there this is what breaks your flutes this is what breaks your cutting edge so you need to be very careful when you have a flute like that, like it gets caught up, you want to break that edge. The way to do that is carefully run the drill in reverse and flop that thing over and then hit it again in forward. Okay, there we go. We took off the edge, that little dangly bit, and we didn't ruin our drill bit. Okay, we're through. So clearly, <laughs> yeah, the old gray mare, she ain't what she used to be. Something going on there with the electronics. Doesn't like it, but we'll see if we can get our holes. If not, we'll change to the mill sucky. Well, I think that's just about the end of her. She doesn't want to chooch very well. That's my own fault. But anything for a YouTube video, am I right? Finish the job. Come on, man. Just fucking drill it. After doing all the holes, that the pilot was too big because the drill bit wants to grab too much. It's cutting too much thickness in one go. We'd have been better off with a smaller, smaller drill bit. Pilot drill bit. Let's see if she runs the chamfer. Oh yeah, quite nicely. So we champ feared that what for given us a fighting chance at getting this tap started straight. Now this part you want some cutting oil for, so high sulfur goopy cutting oil. And there's two tools to, to do this if you have access. Use this T-handle, essentially it's just a little vise for this square section. Also you see that little knob on there, if you're in the drill press you can use this to center, to square it up. You put a little a teat in there and then bring your quill down and that'll center it right up and then you turn it as you go. We're not in a drill press. So if you get her half ass straight, it'll pull itself to where it needs to be. But if you, if you got her cattywampus right from the get go, you're pretty much fucked. So starting it is the most important part. And that chamfer really helps us out. And the reason we go backwards is to cut the chip. So you're actually cutting a chip there and you want to cut while you can hear it. And there's a tight spot there as you go past it because it's folding that chip back over and breaking it off. Oh yeah, this always gets me. The left hand thread in here. So you try and tighten it up and it, it loosens off on you.
Oh, oh. That wasn't good. That big loud snap was a tooth breaking. And the next thing after the tooth breaking is the tap breaking. Now, oh, false alarm. Better safe than standing here for four hours cussing and sweating trying to get a broken tap out. Okay, we're through. Now we're just running her to clean up the threads. Of course, when you look at steel, you, you think it's a uniform material, but it's not. It's got all these little grains in it. So when you're cutting steel, you're actually shearing it at the grains and it leaves all kinds of jagged edges. So you want to clean those up as much as possible with the tap. Now, since I was making some creaking and groaning, I figured I'd have a look for a starting tap and lo and behold, there we go. You can see the difference here, how much more gradual the taper is on the cutting edges. So that's the starting tap. This is the set. This is the plug tap here, so like a maintenance tap. And here is the bottoming. This is for blind holes. That is, blind holes are holes that you can't see through. They have a bottom to them and you get as many threads in there before it bottoms out on the material. You see that? You wouldn't want to start with this guy because you're trying to cut too much material in this small little section. So there we go, we can start with this one. I'm going to show you some sockets and these things are great, especially if you're just doing, if you're just cleaning up threads. You get these from Lyle and there's a little o-ring in there and a square drive that retains this. So if you're doing any kind of maintenance, instead of uh, like sometimes you don't have any clearance, you don't have room. So what you can do is use a ratchet or I like to use a T-handle, a flex bar, also known as a power bar. And what that allows you to do is just flip it over in order to, or rather, it allows you to start and break the chip at the same time. If you're using a ratchet, you got to swap from on to off. Kind of, you know, it's the little things, right? At least that's what my wife tells me. Now this one's harder to get started straight. But once you got it started, it's way faster. And we're at least giving ourselves a fighting chance by using the starting tap instead of the plug tap. Now if you buy one of those cheap Chineseium sets, you will not have any bottoming taps and you will not have any starting taps. They will all be plug taps. Now I, I have those sets as well. They're good for having around because if you need to re-thread something, you have those oddball sizes. But all the common sizes that you use all the time, half inch, three eighths, quarter, you know, M10, M8, coarse, M6, you should have proper taps. It's gonna save you a lot of headache in the end. Oopsie, sorry about that. I hit my cameraman there. Might need to touch up my forearm makeup now. Okay, I'm gonna make your life a lot easier because somebody is going to tell you it's way faster to put it in a power tool and power tap it. However, these are not made for impact guns. And the problem is, sure, it'll do a few holes, but you're gonna break a tap. And once you break a tap, it is such a fucking pain in the ass to get that tap out of a blind hole that all the time you save, the, the 30 or 40 seconds you saved uh, doing it with a drill, it's just right out the window. So do it proper the first time and don't break the tap. You're gonna see it. You're gonna see guys will pound on a nut on here and then take an impact gun with a socket. But you're gonna break a tap that way. And all the time, for, for all the time you save, the say you save 15 minutes over the course of half a day, that 15 minutes is completely out the window as soon as you break that tap. So there's no point. Just do it by hand. Take her easy, partner. Oh, a little tight there. A little bit tight. Yeah, a little close together on the holes. But we'll get her. We'll get her. That's why you don't tighten up all the bolts before. You don't tighten up any bolts before you got them all threaded in. Didn't account for the thick paint. It's amazing what half a cunt hair blue paint will do. 
There you go, just put it in the wrong sequence is all. Sometimes you gotta give her a bit of a tickle before you stick your pokey bit in there. Click. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice. Get in there, boys. Look at this. The interesting stuff you find when you clean up. This is like mycelial mat, only at a... Oh! Hey! I just grew another speaker! That's neat, man. It's like a fungus. Fungal mat. I wonder if I can make gold felt. I bet you I can't.